few introductory comments. As a courtesy to everyone here tonight, please make sure that all cell phones are turned off. Please note that tonight's Planning Commission meeting will be rebroadcast via CityLink and posted on the www.minnehahacounty.org site for viewing by the general public. Any final action taken on the conditional use permit applications tonight will take effect five working days following this meeting unless a written appeal of the Planning Commission's de decision is filed in the Planning Office by Monday, March 7th at 5 p.m. In the event of an appeal, the, discussion, the decision will be referred to the County Commission for a hearing on Tuesday, March 15th, 2022, at or after 9 a.m. The affected person, parties will be notified of the meeting date. Meetings of the County Commission are held in the same room. First on the agenda is public input. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak at Speak on an item that is not on the agenda. At this time, the Planning Commission will consider the consent agenda. Items on the consent agenda are, per are perceived to be non-controversial and meet all of the requirements of the codes and regulations. The consent agenda will be acted on in one motion with no public hearing on the items unless a member of the public, the commission or staff requests the item be removed from the consent agenda. The minutes from the January 24th meeting are included in the consent agenda. Does any planning commission member wish to have an item removed for discussion? Next, I'll read each item on the consent agenda and ask if there are any issues or comments from the staff or the audience. If any member of the staff or the audience would like to be heard on the item, please raise your hand and the item will be removed to the regular agenda to allow you to address the commission later in the meeting. Any items remaining on the consent agenda will be approved by the Planning Commission with the conditions recommended by staff. Okay, item number one is the approval of the minutes of the January 24th, 2022 meeting. Item number two is conditional use permit 22-07 to exceed 3,600 square feet of accessory building space requesting 8,750 square feet on the property legally described as of west 360 feet of track one, Hans edition, southwest quarter, section 35, township 103 north, range 52 west, that is in Clear Lake Township. Petitioner is Brad Gerlach, he's also the property owner. It's approx located approximately two miles north of Humboldt. Okay. Item number three is conditional use permit 22-10 to exceed 20,000 square feet of industrial warehousing area. They are requesting 24,000 square feet on the property legally described as lot three, block one. There is an exception of lots 3A, 3B, and 3C, end of exception, Green Valley Edition, the Northeast Quarter, Section 12, one, Township 102 North, Range 50 West, that is in Benton Township. Uh, the petitioner is Ryan Jones, uh, property owner is TFC Leasing. That is a uh, three-fourths mile north of the Crooks Renner exit west side of Interstate 29. Item number four, conditional use permit 22-11 to transfer one building eligibility from lots one and two there is an exception for the pump station edition and except track one, gross edition, end of exception. Northeast quarter to the northwest quarter, northeast quarter, all in section six, township 102 north, range 47 west. That is in Red Rock Township. Petitioner is Michael Gross. He's also the property owner. That is located approximately two miles south of Garrettson. Item number five is conditional use permit 22-12 to exceed 1,600 square feet of accessory building space requesting 2,250 square feet on the properties legally described as track 38 and track 19, lot seven, Bauman subdivision, section 21, township 101 north, range 51 west. That is in Wall Lake Township. Fisher is Wayne Steinhauer. He's also the property owner. Uh, he lives at 26581 East Shore Place. Item number six, 
Conditional use permit 22-13 to transfer one building eligibility from the southeast quarter and the southeast quarter, northeast quarter. There is an exception of tracks one and two, Nolts edition, and an exception to track three, Nolts edition. Northeast quarter, all in section 36, Township 102 North, Range 51 West, that is in Hartford Township. Petitioner is Caden Knowles, uh, property owner is David Knowles, that is located approximately one mile south of Interstate 90. Item number seven, conditional use permit 22-14 to exceed 3,600 square feet of accessory building space requesting 4,096 square feet on the property legally described as a south half vacant section line um, RO uh, right of way lying adjacent and the north 350 feet east half northeast quarter northeast quarter section 17 township 101 north range 52 west that is in Wellington Township uh, petitioner is Nyla Fullenkamp, property owners the same. That is located approximately six miles south of Humboldt. Okay, those are all the items on cons this consent agenda, items number one through seven. Commissioners? We'll make a motion to approve items one through seven. I'll second. Okay, I have a motion and a second to approve the items one through seven on the consent agenda. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. If your item has been approved, you're free to go. We'll move on to the regular agenda. Item number eight. Conditional use permit 22-15 to expand the Class A dairy concentrated animal feeding operation to 6,500 head, um, in parentheses, 9,100 9, head on the property legally described as the southeast quarter, section three, township 103 north, range 49 west, Severe Drop Township, and to include an updated manure management system on the property legally described as the west half, southeast quarter, and there is an exception at track one, Brandy's edition, and the exception, Section 2, Township 103 North, Range 49 West, Sphere Drop Township. Uh, petitioner is Dandy Vanderdusen, uh, landowner is Ronna and Elsie Hefty. That is located 1.5 miles southeast of Baltic. Kevin. Uh, I guess I'm the lucky one that gets to speak a lot tonight. Um, <laughs> Come on. Uh, this conditional use permit uh, is a request to expand an existing Class A dairy uh, CAFO. Uh, the request is to expand the operation uh, from 5,600 animal units to 900 or 9,100 animal units, which is 6,500 dairy cows. Um, the conditional use permit was originally approved uh, in 2019, is conditional use permit 1930, uh, which allowed the 4,000 head of dairy cows that uh, are there today. Um, the petitioner's request also expands the footprint of the dairy. You can see it uh, on the left side of this uh, image to include land on the uh, to the east of 476th Avenue. Uh, and this land to the east of 476th Avenue will plan. The plan is to contain a uh, manure system, which would include a methane digester on the site for um, uh, processing the manure and, and um, extracting methane from the, uh, the gas. Um, I'll try to move through fairly quick. Uh, the site plan is, is one of the most important parts of the aspects of a uh, dairy or any other kind of CAFO uh, request. Uh, you'll see here the petitioner has submitted a very detailed site plan which shows that there will, the plan for the dairy will expand the barn to the east, uh, not quite doubling the size of it, which is meets uh, roughly the size of animal units that they're requesting, uh, and then expand 
uh, to several our two new lagoons plus the digestion site across the, the street. You can see the new lagoons are kind of the yellow highlighted area. Uh, on this site plan, you'll also see uh, red circles, and those red circles that represent uh, half mile setbacks uh, from each of the houses. Our ordinance, I'll come to that here. Our ordinance requires a Class A CAFO to have a setback of 3,960 feet from a dwelling, church, or business. Uh, this setback is allowed to be reduced to 1,980 feet if a shelter belt of trees are planted uh, around the, between the property and the dwelling, uh, church, or business. Uh, the plan is for the, the entire property to be surrounded with uh, trees as required by the ordinance. Um, I will, uh, since I'm talking about trees, I'll note that uh, uh, their staff, when I visited the site, you'll see some of the photos, that there are trees planted around approximately two-thirds to three-quarters of the site. Uh, the petitioner has uh, pointed out that uh, there was extra construction that they were not planning on um, uh, around the lagoons areas that re made it difficult or impossible for them to plant trees in certain portions of the property. Uh, so those trees have been ordered and, are, and will be planted this uh, spring, summer uh, to meet the, uh, the current site and the, the new proposed site that will have those trees that they'll plant in the future as well. Um, so I will show through a few of the photos here. Uh, this was the, the old site plan. You'll see the trees uh, around the site plan and the kind of the white squiggle lines. Um, some of the, vid the photos of the place. So this photo is looking kind of the northeast at where the proposed expanded uh, footprint will be, uh, where the, the methane digester will be. Uh, this is looking along the tree line uh, of the proper, of the nearest residence, which is owned by the, the dairy operator. Uh, and there's the dairy itself. Uh, this large flat area n right next to the barn, it would be the proposed area for the future barn expansion. You can also see in this photo all those little white uh, uh, sticks coming out of the ground. Those are where the trees are planted and those are protecting the trees um, that have been planted. Uh, this is a kind of a photo of the current lagoons on the north side of the site. Uh, this is looking back south to that, that farmhouse, and you can see the trees on the right. Uh, it, right where this is uh, photos looking at will be the proposed location for the <coughs> methane digestion site. And then this is looking at the corner of the property at the northeast corner. So uh, this is the photo that you'll see that there's ongoing, there has been some more construction on the site. You'll see dirt moving equipment. And th this is also the photo where I noticed that uh, there's areas around here that there are no trees. Uh, you don't see the white sticks poking out of the ground. Um, but then you'll see them again a little bit further down, the closer to the driveway. Um, so I'll go back to the site plan here. Uh, staff is recommending approval of this conditional use permit 2215 to expand uh, the previous conditional use permit 1930. Uh, many of the conditions that are re recommended for the approval conditions uh, are carryovers from the previous permit uh, with the uh, inclusion of that the maximum size of the dairy shall be limited to 9,100 animal units. Um, then condition number eight, uh, staff recommends that trees must be planted around the additional manure facility as shown on the submitted site plan on or before July 2024. Uh, trees must be maintained with a 90% survivability rate and dead trees must be replaced within one year. So that was an added condition of the uh, staff for this, per this permit. Um, I am available for any questions. 
I know that uh, I received a second PowerPoint that the petitioner might uh, bring through and kind of talk through regarding their request. Um, uh, but other than that, uh, we'll be moving forward with that. Any questions for him? Kevin, I see that it says there's doesn't have an address yet. Uh, they'll get one, right, at some point? So the ambulance knows where to go or the fire truck? I think it does have an address. Oh. Did I not put one on there? It says uh, the address of property <coughs> does not have an address oh. yet. Uh, the address is not listed on the um, site plan, but okay. th it is there. There is an address for the site. So the fire <laughs> engine knows where to go? Yes. Yep. Okay. Any other questions for him? <clears throat> Guess not at this time. Is the petitioner here? Will you please come forward and state your name and address? My name is Danny Vanderdusen, address 47568, 251st Street, Baltic, South Dakota. Any of you have any questions for him? We just put this together by way of introduction, sort of uh, introduce myself, who we are, where we came from, how we ended up in South Dakota, and why we're here today. Uh, my name is Danny Vanderdusen. My wife, Sophia, is with me. I was uh, born and raised on a dairy in California, youngest of three boys. And uh, when I graduated from high school, you can't have too many roosters in the hen house. So I knew uh, I had to go somewhere else. We took a job in Arizona, worked there for three years, just waiting and looking for opportunity to get in business for ourselves. Uh, that opportunity came in Northern California in 2001, where we moved up there on a rented facility uh, from a fella who my dad knew as a child who wanted to retire and uh, helped us out. Eventually bought that after 10 years being there. Uh, had six children there. Uh, but while we were there, 90% uh, of the farm ground that used to be corn and alfalfa and wheat became almond orchards and walnut orchards. So procuring feed was just very difficult. We knew the writing was on the wall, so we looked for other opportunities. Uh, 2016, we almost moved to Iowa, uh, but at the last minute, our milk contract kind of fell through. Uh, we went back to the drawing board. I had a brother in Colorado, and so he told me that's a good place to dairy. So in 2017, we sold our dairy, moved to Colorado with the intention of breaking into that market, leased a place, um, and tried hard, but we had a lot of headwinds. and. Uh, Got a phone call in 2019 from a dairyman in Baltic who wanted to retire. And uh, we followed the opportunity, met with him, negotiated a deal, moved our family, six kids, in uh, 2020. Um, while the dairy started getting under construction, we started milking cows in May 10. And so we've, we've been around, kind of feel like orphans sometimes, and we finally showed up here, built our dream place, and uh, we're happy to be here. Enjoyed South Dakota, uh, and it's been good. Um, Pretty quickly after we got started, we got approached uh, by a digester company that wanted a partnership with us on a digester, and so that's uh, how the conversation got started. And like most of these projects, um, scale is, helps uh, the, the CapEx, and so uh, we do have the ability to milk more cows with our milking facility. We built what we could afford at the time, uh, but you can only build a digester once, and so the digester would like to be scalable, scaled up to what we could do in our milking facility. Um, as Paul will talk here later, as far as expansion, it's not in the foreseeable future. Um, the milk processor who buys my milk is not looking for any milk yet. And uh, based upon our economics, I couldn't do it in the next two or three years. But with the digester and the scalability of it, both them and us partnering together would just request the permission to do so should the opportunity ever arise. And so that would be, that's what brings us here today for our request. Thank you for your consideration. Good evening, Commissioners. Paul Kaz, both A1 Development Solutions here in Sioux Falls, 101 North Main. I'm fighting a nasty cold, so bear with me if you could. Uh, I tried to find the right balance of not too many cold meds, and so I wouldn't be sniffling and could still talk coherently here for you. So hopefully we uh, managed to hit that right. I'll go through this PowerPoint and it just I'll try to breeze through it somewhat uh, here. Everybody's been here a long time, but please interrupt me at any point for any questions. Just want to kind of explain the background on the dairy 
uh, and then also how we got to this point on uh, the request here for both the expansion and the digester together. <clears throat> Excuse me. So Kevin already touched on this. Uh, I worked with the Krogsteads back uh, when they decided it was time to make a change. We came in and uh, had the request for the 4,000 head uh, expansion, which made that dairy marketable uh, when it otherwise wasn't. I was working with Danny and Sophie at that time. We knew they were a perfect fit if we could get that done. And thankfully, we got it done just in time before they were in uh, deep enough in Colorado that there was no turning back. So at that time, uh, you know, as Kevin pointed out, we could have requested down to the 1980 foot uh, setback. And we just did a self-imposed 2640 because it just felt more appropriate in the neighborhood. Part of that has to do with we always look at odor modeling to try to get a feel what the science suggests things might look like. And so I'll talk about that some more. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and then the one and a half mile setback uh, from Baltic that's required setback. So jumping into that, uh, just kind of a zoomed in version, a little bit more of what Kevin had already shown. It's kind of hard to see on the screen, but the, the darker green, or well, I guess brighter green triangular uh, lagoon in the northeast corner of the otherwise three existing lagoons is the one that's planned uh, for construction here yet. Uh, and, and I'll get into how that all kind of changes now a little bit here with this digester. So you look at the, the orange square on there from where you can see proposed dairy freestall barn. The existing barn is 590 square or 590 feet, 591 feet wide, and 708 feet, I believe, is a number long. That proposed expansion would be the same 591, of course, and going out another 500 feet, so a uh, little less than doubling on the size. The digester on the east side of the road, the plan there, uh, and I've got a, uh, another zoomed in version here of the digester that will help kind of lay out the, the bits and pieces to it, but the small digester footprint you see there next to that, the smaller lagoon is a covered lagoon really serves two purposes. One is to store the gas that comes out of the digester. The other is, I guess you could call it a secondary digestion for any other little bit of gas that might still be left in the digestate from the main digester. So that's that lagoon. And so the plan then for Danny is to just build one new square lagoon, which would be to the north of the digester and the covered lagoon. It'll flow better. The digestate, when it comes out of the covered lagoon, will go into that, which is an open one. And then eventually that will feed back across the road, underground piping, of course, uh, back into the main lagoons. So any questions on that, on kind of how they fit or flow so far? And we can always jump back to these. Uh, for, for the digester company, uh, the partnership is called MBL Bioenergy. That consists of two digester developers, California Bioenergy, of course, from California, and Savannah Bioenergy, also from California. Two representatives are here with us, Kyle and Veronica with Savannah, for any questions you might have, or they could introduce themselves, or they know all the technical type stuff. And then UGI Corporation is the equity partner that's partnered up with these two to form MBO Bioenergy for a number of projects that we're working on uh, here in South Dakota. So as I get into the digestion stuff a little bit more, and again, I'll try to kind of speed this up, there's, there's plenty of research out there that talks about what's the impact of digesters, not just in what, how's the gas produced and all of those things, but the impact it has on odor. And so one of the, the most thorough research pieces that we've found is uh, the title is Anaerobic Digestion, Biology, and Benefits. Uh, Dr. Ann C. Wilkie uh, at the University of Florida is the author of it. And it talks about what it is that's going on in the digestion process and how it balances the manure. And that's, that's what establishes that conversion of the volatile organic compounds to the methane and carbon dioxide that they're after. Uh, I'll keep cruising along there. Uh, just to kind of give you the big overview of this cluster that we're referring to of three different clusters that we're working on here. This first cluster is this driftwood dairy. And then there's two dairies up in Moody County, Riverbend and Wildwood are their names. Uh, Riverbend is being built just northeast of Del Rapids right now. And this interconnect where these three, the gas from these three digesters will feed is right across the road from Riverbend. So Riverbend, Wildwood, and the interconnector in Moody County and Driftwood here in Minnehaha. <clears throat> Excuse me. So just a little bit on the footprint tool. Uh, 
none of the science is perfect, of course, uh, but the South Dakota Order Footprint Tool, I just kind of put in there a couple of the things that it doesn't take into account that aren't built into the normal program. And probably the key one is that it doesn't take into account anaerobic digestion. So you don't have a little drop down box when you're doing the odor modeling that says, here are your options for odor reduction. There's straw covering, there's impermeable covers, there's geotextile covers, which again, I'm gonna talk about some more. Uh, but we work with SDSU and University of Minnesota, the experts on the odor model whenever it comes to a project. We, we say, here's the project, here's the site plan. Can you please help do the odor model for us so that we know we have the right people doing it? So now uh, I'll get into those some more. I'm going fast, but i try to not make this confusing going too fast. This is the, the basic rule of thumb that SDSU always looks at when they put the odor models together and they'll send a letter out saying this is kind of the basis that kind of has been generally accepted, you could say, for the, the nuisance-free zones to target based on where you're at. The egg country, right around the dairy sites and where the CAFOs are, and then just get, as you get more populated, try to create some more separation, which makes sense. So you'll see as I get into the odor models now that we used in coming up with this plan that we're presenting tonight, we used the 91%, and then you'll see the 94% kind of creates rings, uh, just to try to help give it some, some character, and you'll see on the last one where that comes into play. And then we use the 98% to illustrate the distance from Baltic for a town of 5,000 people or more. Uh, just seemed like, let's go to the little higher level and, and see what that looks like. So I'm gonna show you a few different versions of the odor model. I'll try to explain what each one is showing. Uh, again, stop me with any questions at, at any point. <clears throat> so this odor model was done on the dairy as it sets today, and that's building in that fourth lagoon, the triangular piece that I had showed you on the site plan that Danny's planning to put in there. So that's, that's today. And so if you go back to kind of that original plan on the 4,000 head and the layout and the location, you'll see that all the neighbors are outside of the 91%. Uh, that, of course, is the smallest ring, and then 94 is the bigger one, and then the, the 98 is, is the one that gets uh, kind of to the edge of Baltic there. So there's what it looks like today. I can bounce back and forth on some of these uh, as much as you'd like to, to look at them. Then what we did, if you can just kind of keep this one in mind, uh, then what we asked them to run it, what if they added on to the dairy? In which case, if the dairy does get added on to that extra 500 feet, you've, you've already got the lagoons there. That'd be the only thing being added. What does it look like? And, and I'll jump back and forth for the visual. You'll, you'll notice the 91, it, it definitely gets a little bigger, but it's maybe not as drastic as somebody might think. I'll go back so you can just see how this is as it is today. This would be adding the the 500 feet and the 2,500 head. You can kind of see how that jumped. So really it was after that and the ongoing work with the digesters and talking about, well, what are your future growth plans? Of course, for the digester company, as Danny mentioned, that's, that's key to know going in because if you build the digester too small and then they come back and say, hey, I want to add capacity to the dairy, now the digester might not be big enough to handle it. Now you've got a bigger problem. So as those talks kept going, we thought, you know, let's look at the odor model and let's try to get a feel working with the experts. What does it look like if he does the expansion? We know what it looks like without a digester and without any kind of odor reduction being applied to it. So now I'll try to get into that piece. So from the same article that I mentioned from Dr. Wilkie, this is what they concluded in the research as far as assigning numbers to uh, the level of odor coming out of a dairy that they used an example. So this ton, threshold odor number that they call it, they signed a 247 was, was the number of the manure essentially coming out of the dairy. And then it goes up after three days of storage to this 437 that you see, which it references as a 77% increase, <clears throat> excuse me, and then when they uh, put an anaerobic digester system within it, drops all the way to seven. 
So they're showing in their conclusion a 97% reduction in odor from what it is coming out to what it is coming out of an anaerobic digester. So I'm not going to stand here and say that odor goes down 97% or 98%. We all know that's subjective, and odor means different things to everybody. But at least it is some science that we have to base this off of, just like the odor footprint tool is the science we have. <clears throat> so just keeping that in mind, again, the odor model does not have a category for what's the impact of an anaerobic digester. But what it does have in the model is an option for putting a geotextile cover over lagoons. And if you, th now this model is showing everything as what was proposed early on, the digester on the east side of the road, the lagoons as proposed, and the dairy being added on to. Now, excuse me, with a geotextile cover, that's a 50% reduction in the model, roughly. And you can see, if you remember back to the, the graph of what it is today, that actually shrinks it down a little bit. And I, I'll jump back to those as I go through it. So if we accept that there's at least a 50% reduction now that, again, the research is showing something much higher than that, but if we accept that there's a 50% or better reduction, adding on to the dairy and doing what's proposed actually reduces it from what today's current level is. So then we took it one step further and said, what's it look like if you do the impermeable cover? Again, that's a built-in option in the footprint tool, which is a 90% reduction. And you can see now it drastically goes down. So 50% reduction, 90% reduction. The, the publications and the research are saying north of 90. So if you accept that it's anywhere in there, something north of 50, that's where we ultimately said, hey, we can do this project, and, and if it's approved by the county in advance, as Danny mentioned, right now there's no home for the milk to add all those cows, but the site supports it, the science supports it, and the digester company is willing to come in and say, if you've got the approval, we get it that there's still some risk, but it doesn't feel like near as much risk because we know that if the market ever allows it, you could add these cows and we'll be ready for them when you do. So there is the overview of how we concluded, hey, this, this actually can work, and th this, this is good, and this could actually reduce the footprint. So I'll keep cruising along. We'll go back to that uh, with any questions anybody has. Just real quick, uh, the engineering has been going on for quite some time. Uh, I first met with Savannah Bioenergy a couple years ago. Now I suppose it's been. So uh, that's still all underway plan is to start construction this summer if everything's approved and it's about a 10 million dollar investment is is what that will be right in that range uh, again we already mentioned being able to get the expansion permit now for the future growth allows this to to be upsized accordingly we've been working with the highway department and the township uh, we notified them here a couple months ago probably started working with the highway department five six months ago on getting all the approvals for running the gas lines up again to, to Moody County. The dairy barn expansion, if that's allowed, as it stands today on the prices, that's about another $10 million uh, with everything that, that Danny is planning to do there. So a lot of investment, and of course, if he adds cows, that means he's got to buy more feed and he needs more acres to, to put the manure back on. So it's always good for the farmers in the region too. So we did. Flew the drone, just took a couple pictures, some aerials, uh, give you some idea how things are looking today. And there is the area east of the barn that where the expansion would be for that 500 feet. And then there's, as Kevin had shown a picture too, of the area that the digesters proposed at, which those trees there where Danny and Sophia live, uh, the acreage that they had bought when they built the dairy. Uh, and then this is the, the zoomed in version, just gives you a little bit of more idea of the digester itself and pretty much everything comes in on skids and if you guys have any technical questions on those, the experts are, are here to explain how all of that works. Any questions on any of that or do you want to revisit any of it? Jeff? So Paul, where are you guys going to get the water? 
Minnehaha rural water. Okay, they've got it? Yep. Because they were kind of dry last year. Uh, they had one day, I think, 9.1 1, 9 million gallons, and they figure that it'll be every day 9.1 million gallons in a couple of years. Um, just asking. Also, uh, the, this methane, uh, are, are you going to inject it into northern natural gas up in yes. Moody County? Yep, that same line that runs down here for the Breitmark project, it's same pipeline. Wouldn't it be closer to run it over to the place we're hooking it up here? That idea was thrown out there, but with the other dairies being so much farther north, it's going to be easier from just pipe semantics and routing everything to collect those other two and this one up there by. I appreciate that you would like to see that here, though. <laughs> Any other questions for him? Guess not at this time. Okay. okay. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, thank you. Anyone here in the audience care to speak to this item? Please step forward, sir, and give us your name and address. <coughs> I'm Ralph Steven, and this is my bride, Kathleen. We live in the house, I think right now, what showed on that one picture where everything was around, the circles were around. We live in in the closest one. Okay, let me give you a brief description of our beginning. I've worked in law enforcement for 47 years. I retired from the Sioux Falls Police Department. We took our savings, we took the money from our house that we owned in Brandon, and we went to looking for a house out in the country. Quiet, nice house. Well, we found one. Our realtor didn't know anything about these dairies coming in. I get anywhere from zero to maybe four hours of sleep a night. Everybody's addressing the smell. Nobody's addressing the noise. It sounds like a couple of B-52s over there starting. <laughs> I mean, it's noisy. And uh, she sleeps in the living room. I've been down in the basement looking for a place to sleep. And it, the noise wakes you up all night long. The, the smell hasn't even begun yet. I'm a little bit worried about that. We didn't come down to the very first meeting when they were originally moved in and, and bought and built the dairy. I was assured by the then new owner that there wouldn't be an increase in noise. Well, there's been an increase in noise about 500%. You can't sleep at my place. Uh, the, the, the stench is going to be terrible. I know that is. Every time there's a southwest wind, we can't even go out and use our patios. And they got truck, truck traffic. <laughs> They're hauling feed. Well, we've got to feed the cows, right? They're hauling feed in there. And we got one gentleman that's in love with his Jake brake on his semi. He comes down the road, slams the Jake brake in there, and she just rattles the windows. And then the road, if you're going to keep this thing or let this thing get approved and go on, you got to pave that road to the west of us. I'm, my yard, my, my patio furniture, my windows, I can't keep them clean. The dust up and down that dirt road over there. And they're going to be hauling in feed all the time. We bought this home out there. We took all our savings. We took the, the profits from the house we sold, we found this house. Our realtor didn't know anything about this dairy going to grow up and be a big fella. And uh, we've spent our money. We, we have a house that I hate. I hate the location. I like Danny. I've met him a few times. You know, I like Sophia. I told Danny straight to his face, I like you, but I sure as hell hate what you're doing. I just hate it. Uh, I don't have a whole lot more to say about it. My wife, she uh, took her savings and we sunk into this house. We, we added on to our shed. I added 40 feet onto my shed. Took a big chunk of money to do that. Concrete floors, uh, furnace, insulated, air conditioned. I work on cars. I don't I can't I ain't even awake enough to work on it. I got an old pickup tore apart in my garage that on two to three hours of sleep a night, 
You can't go out and I cat nap all day. I, I, don't know what, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this pickup. I tried to hire a guy to come out and put it together for me. He says, you tore it apart, you put it together. <laughs> well, when you're exhausted, you can't, you know? So it's just, just, just stuff like that. I mean, you gotta think about what you're gonna do. The, the gravel road, the noise, nobody, the trees. Okay, they planted trees. I'll have to give them that. About that tall. I'll be dead before they grow up at all. Also, the trees are planted 35, 40 foot below the top of the hill where the dairy sits. Now, how long do you suppose it's gonna take a tree to reach 75 feet? It ain't gonna make it. I love Danny, he's a great guy. But he, they're building in the wrong spot. How come they have to have a mile and a half around Baltic, but they can be what seems like 75 feet from my house? You know, it's just, it's just unreal. We got dirt problem with the trucks. We got noise problem, something awful. And I see a couple other people in the audience that I think can verify what I'm saying. You know, so I'm not gonna tape it up any more of your time. Go into this, investigate it. For, I had a recording. I made a recording of the noise. I heard it this afternoon. I was trying to take a nap in the chair while I was watching them blow up the neighbors overseas. <laughs> Uh, I, I set this up beside my, my easy chair in my living room. The, the, the dairy over there was just a roar, and they got these machines that don't have mufflers on them or something, and it sounds like B-52 is sitting over there trying to take off. I had a recording on here. I was going to play it for you tonight. <laughs> in my vast wisdom of these electronic things, I was going to name the file <laughs> while I wound up erasing the whole file. <laughs> That worked out well for me, just like buying the place out there. So investigate what, what we're doing here. You got, you're gonna have to check it out. You gotta come, come out and spend a, bring a, bring a pair of pajamas and come out and try to spend the night at my house. The invitation's open. You ain't gonna like it. And now the, the dairy they wanna add on to is coming my way. It's gonna get closer. They got fans that run 24 hours a day. Loud fans, they, just, they sound like an old sleepy trying to take off. Uh, the, the, the plant that's gonna digest and spew all this gas out, it's in my backyard. We had to, we're gonna have to quit using the one patio because that's all you look at. You look over there and see a dairy and, and, and this gasification type plant and, and all this. And I could keep going on, but I'm sure other people want to say something. I'm gonna give them a chance. So, but you're invited out to my house. Four seven six two five. Got so wired up, forgot my address. But uh, you're invited out to come and sit on my front porch where we used to sit. We no longer sit out there because of the noise and the fans run all the time, 24 hours a day. So you're invited, all of you. I'll even serve tea. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you much. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience care to speak to this item? Please step forward, state your name and address. We're Mike and Trish Roach. We live right by these guys. Yeah, be within the new proposed setback. We're within the 75 feet as well. Well, the 1,000 feet that they want to do, yeah. but whatever. Um, yeah, I just want to second um, what uh, Mr. Stephen said about the about the noise. Um, the cross flow ventilation system that they got in that facility, um, you know, when they when they are having to run those uh, several hours of the day, and especially in summer times, you know, when it's uh, when you know it's warmer warmer weather, right? Um, it it is obnoxiously loud, um, as well as the exhaust breaks from all the twice a day, you know, for the, for the milk truck and then during silage times, um, it, the noise levels is, is it, it's a lot more than we were ever. We've lived there for now eight years and when we bought our place, uh, that this dairy, the dairy wasn't around then at that point either. Um, um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm all for development, you know, I mean, let's grow, let's grow our community, but I have concern if they're gonna, you know, if they're, gonna propose to add another 
500 foot expansion to the building, obviously they're gonna have to add more cross flow ventilation, more fans. Um, and what's that gonna do? Increase the noise even more, right? Um, I wanted to speak to the tree thing, one, two. Um, like he said, they're all, they're all little trees. There's no, there's no mature trees. Um, they're not blocking anything. They're not really. They're not they're, blocking noise. There's they're no not screening. The view. There's no screening at all. Um, one of the suggestions I had is that that the screening gets moved closer to our properties, you know, with more mature trees, so that we don't have to view this big monstrosity um, within a quarter of a mile away from our house. Um, I don't know what else did you have to add, you know. I think just with the expansion and with the oh. propo proposed lagoon site, um, yeah. with the uh, the covered lagoon, I'm assuming that there's some sort of fan system that's going to be with that. Do is that correct? No. Is there any noise no. or anything, no. or is it just on the ground? Hold the gas just to hold the gas. Okay. So, so with that though, you're going to build onto the dairy barn, and then there's going to be several more exhaust fans. Right now, it's overbearing. And then you're just going to bring the truck traffic up and the dirt and everything that Ralph said is true. Um, it, it might be little things and it's not affecting the city of Baltic, but it's affecting us. And this is where we live. This is where our families are. Um, so it's a big thing to us. Um, one thing, I, uh, I, 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 think the, I think the odor control uh, with the digester thing, I think that would be a, a big plus. Um, I mean, we need some odor control because it, it's bad. I wonder, I have questions on what kind of conglomeration the digester is going to be, you know, what am I going to have to look at for the next 15 years until the trees grow up high enough to 20 years, you know, um, what kind of industrial park is going to be, you know, within eyesight of me when I, you know, I'm sitting on my front porch and listening to the, um, B-52 bombers going all day, you know. So so those are my concerns as well. So I don't, I don't have anything else, I guess. So. Madam Chair? Yeah. Um, on this map, can we see where the neighbors live? Yeah. Um, Kevin, can you show us? Uh, I'm, so the red circle on the top right there, you see the, the black, yep, right there. Yeah. Okay, and how far is that? Well, this is where Mike lives. Yeah. That's where I live. And we got three neighbors that live over there. I've talked to one gentleman over there, and he's real dissatisfied with the city. And how far away is that? Uh, the, the I'm, as the crow flies, I'd say I'm a quarter just a hair over there. The, the setbacks there is a little over half a mile. That round red circle from that house is a half mile. Across the country. Okay, well, you ought to tell the dirt, the dirt to be spent back. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience cares to speak to this item? Commissioners? Madam Chair? Jeff. You know, I think that uh, certainly conserving that energy is is a wonderful thing. I don't know about the CO2, but the methane, to be able to find another use for it is is great. And I also know that with the current international problem, that uh, oil is going to go up, up, and up, and so will fertilizer. Animal uh, manure will become really really valuable to uh, uh, crop farmers all over. Um, I do understand how the noise could be a problem and honestly I got up at 2 this morning. Um, I did have a 20 minute nap this afternoon um, and I have to be back here at 7.30 in the morning. But uh, uh, you know this is an industrial area. It's we call it egg, but it's not grandpa with a, a tomato plant. It's an industry. And that's the way the whole world is going. You know, whether 
uh, whether you're growing a crop or growing uh, animals or uh, any of that, it's it's not a ma and pa operation anymore. And uh, you have to admit that life changes. Uh, the, the city of Sioux Falls is doubling in size every, I don't know, two years it seems like when you go out and look at the rural area. Uh, it's not going to be an empty lot forever. Um, back to you or back to them? I don't know. D can you address, Paul, any of those items that maybe you're yeah, Danny? Danny, can you go can ahead? I just inject something everywhere I think goes on? Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd make you a terrible good deal on the house. Sir, you have to come to the podium if you want to speak. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're out of you're out of order. Anyhow, anyhow, I'd I'd sell any one of you a really nice house in the country, really good price tonight. Uh, that's how badly I feel about this whole setup. I like I like I like Danny. I do. Him and I could spend some time fishing. I know we could. But it just it just left me. You you said you got up at two thirty this morning. Well, there's nights I don't go to bed. I'll lay in bed until I finally just decide it's time to get up. Because you're laying in bed wide awake, your back goes hurting so bad, it's awful. But there's nights that you just can't believe the noise. And then you think that, it's like listening to that siren sitting out in front of your door all night long. You, you wouldn't like that here in Sioux Falls. Sioux Falls is growing. The whole country's growing. But we should be growing to where everything works out. Why was this permit given in the first place this close to neighbors? You've got, to be, you've got to be a mile and a half from Baltic. I don't understand that. But yet, you can be under a mile. Half, you can be a, right at a half mile for neighbors in the country. I don't understand that. You guys really screwed up someplace. <laughs> you know, all of you did. I live there, and these are my neighbors, and nobody wants to be that neighbor that nobody likes. And uh, so... Um, it is a dairy, and uh, they are cows, but a guy can do what he can do to be as good of a neighbor as he can. Um, I've, this is the sixth dairy I've been on in my life, first one I've built, and I was uh, not familiar with the type of manure system that uh, this dairy would have, so I bought vacuum trucks, um, met with Lynn Bodewine and, and asked him, what should I do at South Dakota? It's a different environment. Um, he's dairied here a long time, and so he helped me with the design of my dairy. We don't flush. We don't have a flume. Uh, that's the kind of dairy that smells the least. The pond can crust over, but it's still a dairy. It's still going to smell. It's the least offensive dairy I've had in my life as far as that goes, but it's still a dairy. Uh, I can do what I can. Um, we think the digester will help uh, to the odor issue. These vacuum trucks are loud. Once I bought them and started using them, they were louder than I had anticipated. And uh, um, there is one other brand called a Noon that I can try, see if it's quieter. Uh, Ralph, great guy, he and I have sat, had a cup of coffee. There's nothing he said here tonight that he hasn't said to my face already, and I appreciate that. I thank him for that. Uh, there are some things we could do that might help. I don't think it'll make it go away entirely. Uh, Paul brought up the picture of the east side of my current cross vent, and you see that long tin wall that wall is going to come down when we expand, and uh, with the hopes that someday, Lord willing, we could, I didn't insulate that wall. So it's like a tin can. Um, with the expansion, there's going to be three inches of insulation all the way around. I think it'll help. I don't think it'll go away. Paul and I have talked about maybe I can spray foam insulation on there now. Um, that's just a, a cost that a guy would do that would in two or three or four years get ripped out but like i said i do want to be neighborly and that is a possibility that might help however we do have the fans running with the type of ventilation that we do uh, out in uh, south dakota here with these cross vents you have to have fans running all the time to get the air out for the health of these cows and so winter time we have minimum ventilation there's minimum fans running and you're absolutely right when it's hot I wish I had twice as many for those cows.
for their comfort. Um, I did buy six blade fans. They're a little quieter, but they make noise. And um, I know trees will help. Ralph is right. We have a low draw, and it's a straight shot straight to his house. And if there's anything I can do, or maybe more trees on top of the bank, Paul and I have talked about that. I can put trees on the side of the bank of my manure if it's okay with DNR. I don't know yeah, if that's, that's okay. I'm not opposed to doing what I can so I, I can mitigate um, other, my neighbor's life. Uh, but at the end of the day, there's some things I still have to run the fans. Um, they're still cows. Um, I do want to be a good neighbor. I did, uh, after meeting with Ralph, he sh you shared with me about uh, the trucks. I called Chandler Feed, which is the main feed buyer that uh, sends feed from the east. And I, uh, I talked to them about their truck routes, and they said, oh, yeah, it's common. We reroute trucks. And so I, I asked them not to run trucks down that dirt road and to either go south first and come past my house or go straight to 115. And he said he'd let his truck drivers know. And so uh, we can follow up with that. Um, the milk trucks don't drive that way. Uh, they, they go to the road and go north. Silage season is a zoo. When we do harvest, we got to get the feed in in three weeks. Um, Ralph and I did talk. Maybe I can put some mag chloride on his road. Got to find out where the dust is coming from. But I'm amiable to do what I can. But at the end of the day, there's just some things like the fans that I, I can't shut off. Uh, I did call uh, last Friday the manufacturer of our vacuum machines. And I asked him if there's a muffler. I had not thought to ask before. Ralph actually asked me. And uh, no one's done it yet. Uh, but they're going to pass it to their engineers. And we'll see what we can do. So. I, uh, we're here, we're in South Dakota, we're calling it home. I live right there. I know it's a big place. We're trying to run it as a family farm. My wife does the books. My kids work afternoons and weekends. Um, and, and, but there's some things that at this point are a little bit out of my control. Is there anything you want to speak to? Uh, the only other thing I would just add to, uh, we did or are submitting an application to DOT if this is approved as part of the expansion uh, to see if we can get some assistance to do some work on that main road that runs east-west in front of the dairy. Uh, and then that, the intent, the expectation be built in chloride to that so it's got year-round dust control and that they would reapply that once a year for sure, probably twice, depending on the year, how dry it is. But that is part of what we're trying to do there. And as Danny mentioned, you know, as, as neighbors had pointed out, hey, there's a lot of dust. Some of, you know, this one feed truck a day is always using that road. Uh, yeah, on other projects and other areas, uh, you know, it's a matter of working with the company. Is this the road hey, that's used, the one that I see in this picture? No, this is the one that runs north-south uh, up to the oil road that goes east from Baltic. So, the, uh, so that's that road again. <clears throat> uh, the east-west road has the most traffic. On the south side of the dairy. The dairy is all concrete, so there's no dust that comes from dairy operations. So you see the scale on the bottom right corner, that's the main driveway where all the loaded trucks have to come in. So it's not like it sends them way out of their way if Danny's telling the company, hey, go over to the, the highway, I forget what that highway is, is that 15, 15 maybe? Uh, and then come in from the, the west. And during silage cutting, uh, the plan there is always get dust control once you know where all the silage is gonna come from at intersections across anybody's driveway. because. It, in a dry year, that is madness of dust for silage for those few weeks. So just try to go out and get chloride applied uh, for both safety and, and neighbors. But if can keep trucks off that road, the only trucks that would be on it then is other farmers or other people in the area that have vehicles coming and going. But they shouldn't be going north-south anyway on that road. Anyone else have some questions for him? Guess not. Thank you. Anybody else care to speak to this item? Can I say one more thing? Sure, go ahead. You had mentioned one time for me to buy your house, and I said get an appraisal. And I'm still willing. And the appraisal doesn't have to take into consideration that the dairy's there, so that you get a fair one. And I've said that before. I'm make a form. Whatever your decision is, though, I'm not going to come across. I just wanted to let you guys know that he and I have talked about that. Thank you. Since no one else wants to speak, I'm going to close the floor. Commissioners? 
You want to speak again? I'd, I'd just like to ask if you're going to buy my house, too. I'm ready. Madness tonight. <laughs> I'd like to, be, like to be up for consideration, maybe, as well. I guess that's between you gentlemen and the applicant. <laughs> okay, I'll close the floor. Commissioners? I make a motion to approve this, and I do appreciate that people are in communication with each other, and I hope that things can continue to be worked on. And uh, technologies will advance the pickup truck I drive isn't the same one that my grandpa drove, and the fan that my grandson uses isn't the same one that Danny is using. So it will hopefully make progress in this world. I'll second that. Okay, I have a motion and a second to approve conditional use permit 22-15. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Number nine, conditional use permit 21-71 to allow outdoor commercial storage on the property legally described as Track 1, Funky's Edition, Southeast Quarters, Section 26, Township 101 North, Range 48 West, that's in Split Rock Township. Petitioner is Alex, Alex Hallback. Property owner is Rex Gullickson and Jason Klein. It's in the southwest corner of Rowena. All right, uh, I am speaking really briefly on this. If you care to speak, would you please exit the room? Kevin Hookman, uh, I'm just going to speak really briefly to this uh, as uh, this item's been in front of us uh, several times, uh, so much that I included the staff report but not included in the PowerPoint. Uh, this property uh, is located, oh wait, I'm on the wrong PowerPoint, that's the problem. Um, We've heard this one a couple times. Yes. Uh, so the last time we heard, it was uh, going to be uh, in front of the, uh, township. the township board meeting for drainage approval and to discuss the road. And I hope that uh, we can hear more about that tonight uh, and uh, move forward with either an approval or a denial from this. All right. So you recommend approval now? Yes, we are still recommending approval on this item uh, with five conditions. Is the petitioner here? We have okay. No. I didn't. Oh, I'm a little surprised the petitioner's not here. I tried to get a hold of him once, and I guess I have not heard whether or not it has been approved or not, so I am not aware of what's happening. I move adjournment to Wiley's Bar. <laughs> <laughs> I did hear through the clerk that um, apparently they came to an agreement between the township and a couple of the farmers, which was Richard Funky and R.J. Wright, with mainly the maintenance of that road, but it's also the drainage. Um, whether they came to a national agreement, I did not really specifically hear that. So. Uh so condition number five, it does have a drainage plan must be approved by planning department prior to development. Uh, if, if you wanted to, we could either approve this with the drainage plan approved by the township and planning department or uh, do something with like that as well. the planning department because you guys will be in touch, don't you think, Bonnie? Well, I would think so, but I'm a little concerned that somebody isn't here. Yeah, I'm a little annoyed about that too. I mean, I mean that's just options, my opinion. The other option you have is you can deny it and come back in six months or a year. Or, or appeal the denial. <laughs> well, you know, they, they, I mean, they have that right, but I'm saying they're the ones that want this to work. So where are they? Yeah. I mean, you commissioners have your own opinion. I, I, I'm just voicing <laughs> what I think. What do you guys you know? think? I mean, uh, we've delayed this at her. Denied it. I know. I'm, yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm all right just leaving it up to as long as they come up with a plan. 
giving it to you guys. That's I'm, kinda, I, I'm fine with it, I guess. That's what I think, too. I'm approving it, I guess. So what's your motion? My motion is to approve it with the, <laughs> township, with agreement. the township agreement on there. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second to approve the conditional use permit, use permit 21-71. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Any old business? Uh, just we'll call it old new business. Um, last month, I, we talked about the uh, maybe a demonstration of the software for the agendas. I knew it was going to be a long meeting, so I told Bonnie that we would push off that to next month to maybe a meeting that's not exact. So it's still coming. I didn't think you'd be wanting to sit in there 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Thank you. Anyway. Another item I'd like to bring up. Go ahead, Jeff. Which uh, this gentleman that's been through the whole meeting, patiently yeah. standing there, <laughs> he his name is Joe Kipley. He's a candidate for Minnehaha County Commissioner on the Republican Party. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, he's been coming to our regular meetings uh, week after week and uh, uh, studying up on the issues. Uh, you you were out uh, to breakfast with Steve Dick, right? Yeah, yeah. and uh, me. And anyway, I just wanted to introduce him. I don't know about his, if I'll vote for him. <laughs> Anything else? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Aye. <laughs> Aye. We're done. Thank you. Is there any other candidates? Two, yeah? Yeah, there are four yeah. of them. There are four, yeah. four Republicans and one Democrat. Yeah,